A mysterious new wallet becomes the third largest Bitcoin holder in three months. Is it BlackRock? A Chinese government official gets life in prison because of Bitcoin. And is Bitcoin a better buy now than in March 2020? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, welcome back to Crypto Daily. So Bitcoin still down from last week. We're at 26,000, uh, about 26,200. Um, so we've recovered slightly. Uh, we've been kind of bouncing around between uh, 25,500 and, and this level. So um, I've been accumulating Bitcoin. I guess we'll uh, we'll have to talk about if it's a good time or not. Uh, that'll come later in this episode. First piece of news, um, someone's accumulating Bitcoin. Uh, there's a new Bitcoin wallet that basically received Bitcoin for the first time um, back in May, I think. Um, sorry, back in March. Um, and now they have 118,000 Bitcoin, which is about $3 billion. So uh, there's a lot of speculation about who this wallet is and who owns it. Uh, some people think it's Binance uh, or some other large exchange that's basically just moving their Bitcoin around. Um, other people think that it's BlackRock, which obviously would be super bullish for the industry uh, if at some point that were to come out that uh, BlackRock basically has been accumulating Bitcoin and, and putting it in this wallet. Um, it's not impossible, I would say. Uh, but there isn't really any evidence that that points to it. I think the only evidence that people on Twitter are pointing to, which a lot of people on Twitter speculate that it's BlackRock, um, is that the first major transaction, uh, which was 3,400 Bitcoin, occurred on May 16th, uh, which was a month later um, than, or and then it was a month before the June 15th uh, filing that BlackRock did. So. Uh, a lot of interesting dates behind this wallet and just some interesting movements. But like I said, it, it could just be an exchange that's moving Bitcoin around or it could be BlackRock uh, picking up a lot of Bitcoin uh, and putting it in this cold wallet uh, that they'll use for the uh, spot ETF if and when they get approved. Um, so only time will tell at this point. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of speculation about BlackRock. Um, so this tweet and, you know, some comments underneath it, we're talking more about, um, you know, is BlackRock manipulating the price of Bitcoin? You know, we're kind of seeing this wild uh, dance between, you know, 31K and, and 25K. Uh, a lot of people think that BlackRock is manipulating the market so that they can pick up more Bitcoin on the cheap. Um, because, you know, if and when they get that spot ETF approved, they're going to have to hold Bitcoin. Some people don't understand, though, that it can be defined like a, a percentage of what they have to hold can be defined. So, um, you know, what if they only have to hold 1% of the spot ETFs market cap as as actual physical Bitcoin? So a lot of people aren't really factoring that in, but uh, it's entirely possible that BlackRock isn't going to have to hold a whole lot of Bitcoin uh, when this ETF gets approved. So, um, you know, that being said, they still are going to have to hold some amount of Bitcoin. So overall, the ETF getting approved is is still something I'm bullish about. But um you know, like I said, I, you know, speculating that BlackRock's manipulating the market just so that they can buy more Bitcoin for the spot ETF, I think is a little bit of a stretch, uh, but time will tell for that too. Um, so your European crypto ETPs, which stands for exchange traded products, uh, have started to see big inflows since BlackRock's Bitcoin filing. So prior to that, they were seeing a lot of outflows um, and a lot of that had to do with the SEC and this overall negative attention that crypto was getting um, you know, there were a bunch of lawsuits by the SEC and seemed like there was a big crypto crackdown coming. Um, so I think a lot of Bitcoin was just kind of flowing out of these uh, ETPs. And then suddenly you get the BlackRock filing and then the trend completely reversed. And now you're seeing a lot of inflows uh, back into those ETPs. And I think this is going to be a big conversation going forward where people start to look at how much these inflows are. You know, if BlackRock's ETF gets approved. Um, you know, we all kind of watch like these big wallets on 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 chain and where Bitcoin's flowing. But I think a whole new metric is going to come out where you start really looking at the inflows and outflows of these ETFs and ETPs. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on on some of these other products because there's plenty of Bitcoin products that aren't in the US uh, that are already live. And and, you know, some of them are thriving. So, um, you know, BlackRock's ETF potentially getting approved, I think has been really bullish for these other uh, ETPs. But, um, you know, overall, I think once Black Rocks get approved, I could actually see some some outflows from these. But, um, you know, people tending pr to prefer the U.S. markets uh, over some of these other ones. Um, so on similar lines, we've seen uh, the Bitcoin hash rate uh, and mining difficulty reach new all-time highs. So if you don't know, when that 
mining difficulty reaches a new all-time high it's basically a signal you know it doesn't really tell you anything exact but it's basically a signal that miners aren't leaving and um you know competition is still high which means that it's profitable to mine bitcoin uh even at the current price so you know you can see back here um on in may in 2021 you saw this huge crash uh, in, in the, uh, mining difficulty. So what that basically meant was like a lot of competition left, uh, the Bitcoin mining space, which could coincide with the price going down and just overall profitability. So the fact that it's reaching a new all time high, you know, despite the current price of Bitcoin, I think is generally a bullish thing. And again, like it doesn't tell you anything exact about the price, but it does tell you that it's still profitable to mine Bitcoin, uh, and that new miners are still coming online and competing. Um, so speaking of mining, um, a Chinese official was sentenced to life in prison for Bitcoin mining. So he uh, basically bribed a bunch of government officials and he was hiding the electricity consumption of this Bitcoin mining operation. And obviously China has a huge ban uh, across the board on, on you know, Bitcoin and crypto. Um, so this guy was basically running this huge mining operation um, and it was a $329 million Bitcoin mining enterprise. Um, and it was consuming 10% of the city, it's called Fuzhou. Uh, it was consuming 10% of the city's electricity for this Bitcoin mining operation. And he was basically bribing officials to, to hide that consumption and say that it was being used for something else. So kind of an interesting story. Um, you know, we've seen kind of this two-sided game in China between banning and unbanning uh, Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, Bitcoin's daily RSI is the most oversold it's been since March 2020. Uh, which is, you know, the COVID crash. Um, does this really tell us anything? It What it tells us is that uh, basically, you know, there's a lot of different indicators, including like the 200 day moving averages that are saying that Bitcoin is super oversold, um, super low relative to other metrics. Um, and, you know, typically in history, and history does not always repeat itself, if you were to buy on some of these metrics, and wait, you know, two, three, four, five years, uh, you do pretty well for yourself in Bitcoin. So, um, you know, definitely not in history is never a guarantee of the future, but it can be an indication. So, like I said, I've been accumulating Bitcoin uh, down here. Uh, I wasn't really buying a ton at 30K. I, I was buying a little, you know, I, I'm a huge believer in dollar cost averaging. So I was still buying, but down here, you know, I've increased my dollar cost averaging and every day I've been picking up a little bit more. So, um, you know, I tend to I tend to be a buyer on more of these like long term macro trends, um, you know, not looking at like daily trends, but but these long term macro trends I do tend to like. Um, so uh, Dave Portnoy recently retook over Barstool and it became famous that he took it over for zero dollars after selling it for 500 million. Um, he just said that they will definitely add Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of funny memes about Dave Portnoy, you know, he, he bought Bitcoin a few years ago and then sold it at a loss and people were talking about how he has paper hands. So his whole game is, is to do things that puts him in front of the mass media. So obviously saying something like this is more for the attention than for anything else, but would be cool to see them add Bitcoin to their balance sheet. And, you know, to close this out, I, I like to talk, especially in this time where we're kind of like in this limbo phase before the bull market like really hits. And, you know, maybe the bull market's a few months away. Maybe it's a few years away. We don't really know. But I love to set out a plan, you know, before that hits. So, you know, Bitcoin went to 31K. People kind of lost their shit. Uh, people start to kind of FOMO in. Um, but I think what the real thing, the, the real, you know, approach that you should have is, set out some sort of plan. It doesn't really matter what the plan is, but have some kind of plan and follow that plan and then you can optimize it later. Um, so DeFi Edge, the, this guy always tweets um, really good, you know, just fundamental advice, like basic investing principles. Um, but in crypto, we kind of throw it caution to the wind and, you know, people just do whatever they want. But like I said, I dollar cost average. I try to apply, you know, more fundamental approaches to crypto. Uh, so this is my little reminder to maybe try that as well. Uh, so today was August 23rd. I will see you guys for August 24th tomorrow. Um, have fun, maybe dollar cost average a little, not financial advice. See ya.